Today, there are over 50 countries around the world which continue to use the death penalty. Individuals who break the law can face a firing squad in China, lethal injection in the USA, and the hangman's noose in Singapore. It is only a decade since capital punishment was finally removed from British law. For centuries, Britain carried out state executions and capital punishment was defended as a deterrent against crime, retribution against those who broke society's rules. The noose would be put over their neck, a hood put over their head, and the cart would drive away, leaving them to dangle and to gradually, slowly, up to 30 minutes, to strangle to death. For over 200 years, a moral battle raged about whether the state has the right to execute. A powerful liberal elite emerged, determined to abolish the death penalty. The death penalty is inhuman and degrading when you see how it is carried out and the procedures that are necessary. But the vast majority of public opinion has continued to demand the ultimate punishment. There are certain sorts of murder that are so premeditated, so violent and so shocking that in the interest of maintaining confidence in the rule of law, the only appropriate punishment is the death penalty. This debate has shaped our ideas about how a civilized society should punish its citizens in the 21st century. The word punishment comes from the same root as pain. It is in its essential conception painful. If it is not painful, it is not punishment. The history of capital punishment in Britain is a long and bloody one. Since the Middle Ages, those condemned to death have variously faced being boiled alive, burnt at the stake, or hung, drawn and quartered. But it was in the late 18th century that the death penalty was applied most widely. London, 1783. Thousands crammed the streets of the capital to watch a public execution carried out in the king's name. This is the height of the bloody code. A system of justice and punishment that listed over 200 offences for which a man or woman could be sent to the gallows. In a society in which, as they would have expressed it in those days, they were lovers of liberty and very keen on property, uh, they had to have a means of protecting both their liberty and the property. So you don't want a standing police force and you don't want a standing army and therefore there was the very successful argument in Parliament that you had capital punishment for just about everything. Under the bloody code, even petty theft like pickpocketing or stealing a sheep could result in the death penalty and it also threatened to execute anyone who kept the company of gypsies for more than a month, or who blackened their face with the intention of stealing. Because we've lost sight of its meaning to contemporaries, and we can reach only for one explanation, that those people two, three hundred years ago were barbarians compared to us. But go back to the 18th century, and you have very few prisons, very inefficient policing, but you do have the noose, and the noose is understood not as a cruel device, uh, but as a way of testifying to the anger of the king. The execution day started at Newgate Prison just to the um, west of St. Paul's in the center of, of town, and the procession went from the gates of Newgate through High Holborn, what is now modern um, Oxford Street, on to the site of um, Tyburn. 
From the Middle Ages, Tyburn had been the traditional site of the majority of public executions in Britain. The condemned would probably try and wear their best clothes. Some would put up a big, brave show, and they would be taken along this route where people would um, either stand on the street or the better off would actually hire out rooms on either side of the streets. With no police force or prison system, capital punishment served as a deterrent against crime. It was therefore important that everyone in society should attend to witness justice being carried out. And there was one occasion where a school teacher was reprimanded by the moral authorities, probably by the local newspapers, because he decided to take his children on a picnic so they wouldn't see the execution. This was considered a very bad thing to do. The trouble was, learning a moral lesson from the death of somebody else um, was what the moralists wanted. It wasn't often what they got, because people would frequently go along there in more of a party atmosphere. The execution day had its own ritual involving the participation of the crowd itself, which appeared to revel in a macabre party atmosphere. But some historians have interpreted this scene very differently. It misses the silence that descends when the executioner comes onto the platform. When top hats came into fashion, it misses the point of the big cry, hats off. It misses the kinds of communication that were possible between members of the crowd and the felons about to, be di about to die. The jokes, the teasings, the cries from the crowd, hello Curly, keep up your spirits. Of course, a poor sod was actually shitting and pissing himself in sheer bloody terror. Capital punishment as a deterrent was believed to work due to the painful nature of the executions. Hangings often ended in a slow strangulation. If they were lucky, their friends would pull on their legs to help end their misery. This is the origin of the phrase, pulling your leg. The watching crowd knew that a person's social class would have determined whether they were executed. One of the great defenses of the death penalty was the idea that somehow every aristocrat and every member of the gentry was subject to the same laws. In fact, it's not true. It's self-evidently not true. 99.9% .9 of everybody who was executed by the state were, was dirt poor and from the lowest class of, um, of Britain. The vanishingly small number of aristocrats and members of the gentry who ended their lives in execution did so by dint of being psychopaths and lunatics. The accused faced trial by a jury drawn from the local community many of whom were sympathetic to the defendant's case. Frequently, these juries sought to commute the punishment to avoid the death penalty. Many juries, for example, refused to value property at their full value, precisely in order to prevent a capital charge being applied in that particular case. Juries also regularly, um, regularly pleaded for mercy, even after they'd found somebody guilty and seen them um, sentenced to, to be hanged. 